Hey guys, it's John here. It's Thursday, uh, September 23rd, 2001. Today I want to share something that I think is very important. I think it's kind of a missing link or a missing piece of the puzzle in terms of what has been the kind of crazy stuff that we've been seeing going on over the world. And this, I think, is one of the foundational components of that that a lot of people don't seem to be aware of. I have personally shared it with a lot of people individually over the years, uh, but I very rarely see this document mentioned. And the fact that it exists and the timing of when it was created uh, has a lot of very significant implications. So this document, uh, let me start by just saying this. It, first of all, it's called the Powell uh, Memo, or the and sometimes referred to as the Powell Manifesto. Now, uh, William F. Powell Jr. was... Uh, a high-level attorney or lawyer who worked for a lot of large or sat and sat who sat on a lot of boards for prominent corporations in the United States, and also worked for Philip Mo, Philip Morris, the tobacco company, for many years. And um, in uh, he was appointed by Nixon to the Supreme U.S. Supreme Court, where he served from 71, 1971 to 1987. But just prior to him joining the court, he was commissioned to produce a confidential document for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, uh, which was titled Attack on the American Free Enterprise System. And this was a blueprint for conservative business interests to retake America. Okay, so think about that. 1971... Uh, uh, the corporate sector comes up with a very sort of general outline or overview of how to preserve their interests. Now, the timing is Im important because if we recall that it was just prior to then in the 1960s that this very significant counter-cultural movement arose uh, in the United States and around the world, it was also tied to uh, Vietnam War protests and so forth, but it actually questioned many different aspects of the dominant paradigm at the time. Uh, everything from relationship values to the way we live and work, the way we appear and so forth. And so a lot of young people at that time challenged, were very openly challenged many aspects of what prior to then had been assumed to be quote unquote normal. And out of this period of time, this period of time spawned many things that we now take for granted, uh, and everything from women's rights to uh, racial equality to um, all kinds of uh, higher social values and so forth. And also during that period of time, Eastern philosophy and religion was, was uh, brought to people's attention. Uh, and uh, so this, this movement was, was very significant. And... Uh, the business community uh, was, the corporate community was concerned about this, as well as the plutocrats, of course, uh, because they saw this challenge to their paradigm as a direct threat to their interests. And so Powell was uh, commissioned to come up with a strategy to counterattack that. And many, th th this document spawned, or is believed to have spawned, uh, many of the think tanks that we're familiar with, and uh, especially on the conservative side of the equation. Um, and so Powell drafted this document, which talked about how business interests could influence uh, public education, higher ac education and academia, the media, uh, journalism, TV, radio, uh, as well as the judicial system and the political system, and the, how they could, be, they could and should start making deliberate efforts to influence them uh, so that they would uh, produce the results that would benefit their particular interests. And I think if we look back at what has occurred in the last 50 years over a long time span and view it from a high level, uh, we can see how this has played out in many different regards. I mean, think about how ed education uh, uh, systems have been being attacked uh, how uh, politics has become a game for the very wealthy, uh, whose interests are reflected in policies and so forth. We think about how all of these think tanks have been producing 
uh, misinformation and disinformation to muddy the waters. Quoting from Wikipedia, the Powell Memorandum thus became the blueprint for the rise of the American conservative movement and the formation of a network of, of influential right-wing think tanks and lobbying organizations, such as the Heritage Foundation and the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, as well as inspiring the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to become far more politically active. City University of New York professor David Harvey traces the rise of neo neoliberalism in the U.S. to this memo. The implication of all of this is that what we have been, and this is also, uh, this document is also associated with the, the, be, the beginnings of what was called neoliberalism, which is basically uh, a philosophy that was survival of the fittest, essentially, um, and that, you know, trickle-down economics and all that utter nonsense that has been promulgated by, uh, on the right particularly. So the point of all this is, is that this, what we have been witnessing, and I think culminating with the former president, uh, 45, just sh from a, a logical perspective, it's just sheer insanity. Republicans employed this concept called the noble lie, and we be saw this in action during the Gulf War. You could tell lies if, if you believed they were in the high, higher good, because the, the, the masses lack the knowledge and information and the intelligence to actually know what is in their best interests. And so people who were in positions of power, or authority, or influence could lie uh, and not feel guilty about it. Now, I'm not aware of any philosophy uh, that is based in truth that encourages or permits lying. So, uh, you know, that raises a whole bunch of questions right off the bat. Uh, but what they saw is, I think, is that in order to uh, to further their interests, they would have to mislead to get to achieve their end results. And so they literally redefined the notion of whether lying is good or bad so that they could lie. And, you know, now we have vast realms of misinformation and disinformation and confusion in the broader public sphere. And much of that, I think, can be attributable to these news organizations uh, who have been promoting and distributing vast amounts of complete BS. And people uh, no longer, or many people are unable to distinguish truth from re uh, uh, and reality from complete and utter nonsense. So there's this mass delusion that's going on, which was deliberately manufactured to serve the interests of very powerful elites, uh, the plutocrats and corporate interests. Now, as somebody who w spent years devoted to promoting scientifically accurate information on climate change, I saw how that played out in the arena of climate change for many years where, you know, uh, the fossil fuel industry with its trillions of dollars worth of untapped assets, and there are many countries in the world who, who do not even have GDPs in those, in the, those realms, uh, you know, in terms of figures, uh, deployed misinformation and disinformation campaigns to uh, extend the lifespan of their industry uh, and did so deliberately. This is all on the public record. This is all known. It's not uh, controversial at all. Uh, also, it was really the tobacco industry. Uh, and again, Powell was involved with Philip Morris for many years, who, uh, who perfected the disinformation campaign because they saw, you know, this notion of linking smoking to cancer as a direct th threat to their industry. And they were able to forestall regulations on that for decades, despite the fact that, you know, millions of people were dying prematurely by using their products. Uh, this is uh, all just my opinion only, of course. <clears throat> uh, so um, now uh, just another note of interest with, with regards to the timing of all of this. Uh, the cultural, countercultural sort of revolution that occurred in the mid 1960s, uh, astrologically, is very clearly linked to this Pluto Uranus conjunction, which occurred in 1965 and 1966. Uh, now, this is something that is not a very frequent occurrence. Uh, the next time Pluto and Uranus will conjunct will be in 2104, and the previous time was 1850 and 1851. But when these two planets combine, Uranus with its radical aspects and Pluto with its transformative aspects, 
we do see uh, huge shakeups and innovation and breakthroughs and changes uh, that occur uh, almost like a leap forward. Now in uh, 2012 through 2015, Uranus and Pluto squared, the, the first sort of opening square. Um, and so many of the issues that um, were ar raised in people's consciousness back at that time in 65, 66, were brought back out into public awareness to see if they had been fully integrated or not. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to make a highly detailed astrological video here right now, but I want to point that out, that there's a clear linkage to that. Now, there's a couple other things that I want to put forward as sort of key uh, documents in, uh, or key uh, missing pieces of the puzzle, I think. Uh, there's another something else that I want to discuss, which I will do later, that I think is critical to understand what's going on in the world these days. Uh, but again, just to summarize, that <clears throat> a lot of the craziness that we've been seeing gradually unfolding over the last 50 years was purely intentional. None of it was accidental uh, and uh, very deliberately done. Uh, so, you know, I, I say this because I, I see a lot of people kind of scratching their heads going like, what the hell is going on? Why is the world going crazy? Why are we experiencing what we're seeing happening? And what I'm saying is it's it was fabricated deliberately. So don't think it was, this is all, any of this is accidental. It's not, it was deliberate. I will, uh, of course, have links to this document in the description below. I apologize for the choppy uh, editing and recording here. The environment I'm in right now is just really not conducive for this, which is annoying. Uh, as well, Mercury is, is about to go retrograde and it's going to be kind of a crazy Mercury retrograde crazy Mercury retrograde. So uh, I've been having a lot of weird technical challenges uh, recently. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your comments and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.